Hello world and welcome. I'm Don and here is another video. This time I'm going to be taking a look at the crop tool in DxO Photo Lab 7. And this is uh, after a question that I had in the comments about a particular aspect of cropping. I'll come to that later, but I thought to myself it's not 100% super intuitive, so that got me thinking and then I thought well if I'm doing it I might as well do a quick run through of everything. So I'm going to kind of do this in two sections. I'm going to do a general look at the crop tool, looking at the basics, which I think will be most helpful to people who are new to the software. And then I'm also going to jump in with a few tips that I think even if you're a, a seasoned user, there's a decent chance that you might at least get one good little tip there, including one that somebody dropped on me a couple of years ago that has been absolutely life-changing to my <laughs> to my cropping life. So I'll save that one save that one for last. But before I dive into that, I would just like to take a quick moment as well to pop forward here and just remind everybody we've got, I think, maybe a couple of days left of the 2023 Black Friday Bonanza. So we've got sales on all of the different DxO software. We've got Photo Lab, Pure Raw, Viewpoint, Film Pack, Nick Collection. Everything's got some type of discount, whether you're new to DxO products, or if you're upgrading, you can check it out. And I've got some affiliate links in the description. So if you wanted to check those out, that would be much appreciated. Helps the channel and doesn't cost you a thing. So now enough of that, let's dive in and pop back here to my image. So thinking about the crop tool, of course, we start with an image and then we need to grab the crop tool. And we've got a couple of places to do that. So I'll just First of all, come up here to this one and turn it on. You can see here there's already a bit of a crop on this image because I've just been, you know, in, in and fiddling with this just before pressing record. And so that's one place that you can do it. And then also over here, you know, these, these along the top, if you mouse over them, the little names will come up. There's a geometry one. If you click here, we've got the same situation. A couple of more possibilities in here. Plus I can I can turn the tool on there. And that is exactly the same tool. So you can notice here that I've got some handles on the side that I can use for my cropping. And you can also notice that I've got a grid overlay going on here. So two things to tell you about that. First of all, the grid overlay is turned on down here in this sort of, there's some different options show up down here. And if I click that, that will turn off and on. You can also see there's an opacity slider here and you can see if I bring that down I can start to see more of the image. I can't recall but memory does tell me that by default this is in a, in a different place but I just find it easier for my own cropping if I just don't see what's there at all because then I can just focus on what I have left. The other quick thing that I wanted to hit on is just a, a interesting quirk and I've, I've brought a second image in just to show you this quirk, because again, like I said, I've already been in at this image and just, you know, like I said, just before pressing record, just making sure that everything is going to go smoothly. But if I turn this off and then I'm just going to go over to that other image I've got open here. So I've never opened the crop tool on this one. And, and like I said, just an interesting quirk. If I click on the crop tool now, you'll notice I don't get any handles straight away. Don't know why. If I come down here and when I click on this, just uh, all I did was a single click and this is what's come up. The handles and in my case, because I've got it turned on, the grid appear. And now forevermore on this image, the handles and the grid will appear if I click on the crop tool. But just that very first time, for some reason, it doesn't come up automatically, but don't sweat it, it's no big deal. So I'll just pop back to my other image here and go ahead and turn the crop tool back on. So now I've gotten my, my menu items along the bottom here again. And again, I've already shown the show grid and the opacity and how those impact the other major thing that I'm dealing with in this bar down here. And, and I do have rotate. These are like full, like that kind of rotate. I'll just put that back. But the other major thing that I'm really dealing with in this menu bar is my different aspect ratios that I can set. So it starts off as original in general, 
but then you've also got a, a possibility for unconstrained. We'll just we'll, it'll let you move it however you manage to move it. You know, you just grab the handles and move it however you like, and it will just do what you want. And then you've got these predefined aspect ratios coming down here. So if I clicked on four by three, for example, it will just jump into that. And just as you might imagine in terms of sizing, if you grab one of the handles and start to drag, you know, I've got this four by three aspect ratio. So it's going to maintain that as I get uh, smaller and bigger. If I grab one of the middle handles, it will do exactly the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Then the other thing you have is positioning, sizing and positioning. So positioning, just a simple, you can see that I've got that little four pointed mover sort of tool and, and, and literally just click and drag and put it wherever you like, and then come over here and size a bit more and position a bit more. So just as, as simple as can be really. Another thing that's good to think about is that you've got the possibility for a custom aspect ratio. And you know, if I come here and I go enter custom aspect ratio, then I can just suddenly type in this spot and you can put sort of whatever, and it, it'll kind of do math for you. So, you know, just, I've just kind of picked 2048 by oh, 693, you know, something really kind of random. So I, I do that and it's going to um, sort out what that crop is going to be. And gives me that ratio there. So it kind of helps me out in that regard. You know, I've used this when I wanted to have a particular number of millimeters or something like that, you know, and I just, I just plunked them in. I particularly, if I'm doing a print, so that can be handy. But then of course you don't want to get a whole bunch of, you don't want to get a whole bunch of custom ratios in there. So the great thing about this too, is if you come in, you can immediately see if I mouse over these, I get a little trash can. So I've just created that one, but then I, you know, only actually want it the once because I'm doing something very particular, then I can just go ahead and, and delete it and it will go back that way. And then of course, this is a great time to show you that we've also got this reset button. So if at any time you want to just get back to your starting point, you can just click on reset. Now, of course, not so long ago, they also added the possibility to include rotation with your cropping and something good to look at with that is, is if I come up here to one of the handles, um, you see, I, I did just get it there. It's, it's, it's when it's near the edge, it, it can feel a bit tricky to actually get the rotate handle. I find certainly if you bring it in a little bit, super easy, just need to be near the corner and you can see that changes to a rotate handle. And then you can just kind of, as you're, as you're going, you can include the rotation in amongst your crop like that. And just to take a moment to notice that that rotation that's happening there is exactly the same as this horizon tool. So as I was moving that rotation, the horizon tool moved and it's brought us to this 1.63 region. And of course, associated with that horizon slider is also a horizon tool, which would, you know, give you some more power in that regard. So you just kind of get it. I'm not taking a lot of time or care here. What I normally do with this tool, by the way, and I know this isn't about this tool, is I get it roughly placed and then I bring it into 100% so that I can see, you know, am I actually on, on that, that spot? Am I hitting it accurately? Because it can be a bit hard to see that one. So I'll just go ahead and click apply again, not having taken the most care in the world. Zoom that back out. Now, this is probably also a really great time to mention that within this area, where I could turn my tool on again. I've also got the ability for the correction. Right now it's on manual because I was messing with it manually, but I've also got auto based on keystoning and horizon. Keystoning is going to be associated to sort of this perspective correction, and that's associated to horizon. So if I click on that, you can see how it's just corrected itself and it's taken all of the black edges off of that. So that's a really handy feature as well to keep it on auto if you don't have a, a particular other aspect that you're trying to hit. And of course, it's worth mentioning that if you've done a crop like this one, you know, let's, let's do it a bit more and you've turned off your crop tool again like that. And then you decide that you'd like to make a further adjustment. It's just a matter of turning it back on, making that further adjustment, whatever it is of made there. And suddenly that's updated that way. 
So I think that's probably got the basic crop maneuvers covered pretty well. And I'd like to just hit you up with a few sort of extra bonus thoughts on cropping that have been really helpful to me. And this first one is actually the source of the, the video. So the question that I was asked was about what if you have uh, an image that's in a landscape crop and you want to make it be portrait? So you turn this on and your crop, let's, let's take a, let's take a ratio other, you know, let's take four by three here, but you actually want it to be four by three portrait, not four by three landscape. And so if I grab the handle down here and I maneuver it this way, heading towards the corner, the upper corner, you can see it just continues to resize itself. The difference is if I grab this handle and drag it straight across towards the lower right handle, do you see how that flipped? So when you first start, you can see how my cursor is staying down and the crop is going up. It's going in, but I just stay my course, keeping it going straight across the bottom towards that lower right side. And with a little time, it will flip. And then now I've got this. This has been super handy to me because I often shoot headshots, portraits like that, just with my camera in sort of, you know, a landscape mode. I don't flip it up. It lets me get both shoulders. I'm not usually worried about the resolution, so it's not a big deal. And But usually I deliver in a portrait size, so that's been a really handy trick for me to be able to just flip those over. My second to last tip is that if you're going to be doing, if you've got, let's say, 20 images and you've been doing work on them, I don't tend to crop them each as I'm with that image. I leave the action of cropping till the very end, and then I flick through the images. So if I just, I'll just bring this up for, for a tick. So I've got this image here and I've done my crop and then move to this image and my crop tool is still open and ready to go. And I can start to resize and do whatever it is that I want to do there. So that's a really handy thing in terms of speed because other, it just saves you a few clicks. It saves you needing to travel around the screen to, to click the button to grab what you want. You can just slide over, grab a handle, drag it, do what you're going to do. And that in conjunction with this, my final tip, my final tip, which I would say has saved me heaps of time and is my favorite tip that I've, that I've received in ages is a way to go to unconstrained without needing to come here and click on unconstrained. And that is with holding the control key while you're on a handle. And suddenly you can do whatever you want with it. Like that. Funny enough, I just had to do a retake of this last bit because I was, I was looking up and not looking down and I, I pressed on shift rather than control. And then I was saying, why is it not working? And then I looked down and I saw, because I'm hitting the wrong key. So what I was showing when I did my boo boo was that, you know, if I put, even if I put this on an aspect ratio, like two by one, and then I come up and, and again, holding my control key, it just automatically breaks that. So it doesn't need to come from original. It can come from any, any type you're on. So when you're flicking between images, as I do doing it in a row, it's great because you don't need to worry about changing anything else. You flick over to the image, you grab a handle, you hold control, you shape it how you want to shape it. And, and then off you go to the next image. So you can really kind of speed up that flow. So with that, I'm going to leave it there for the day. Again, a reminder of those affiliate links down in the description below. Hopefully that's been helpful to you in some way, shape or form. Thanks for watching and I will talk again soon. Bye bye.